but I do want to talk to you about the package. Um, you know that the package was $787 billion. On your tables, there should be copies of what our office put together, which is a recovery and reinvestment act, kind of a guide. And I want my staff to stand up too while they're here so you can see who my staff is. It's here. Uh, these, these young people have done a lot of great work. We have Stephen and Sean and Sharon and who else was here? I guess that's it that's here right now. And they are available if you want to ask them any questions afterwards. But please, if you haven't taken a packet, If you haven't taken a packet, please do take one, because I think it will give you a good idea of those things that are available through either competitive grants or available through uh, direct federal funding or are available through the states. Now, I hope there's no media in this room, because, you know, I'm going to say some things I probably shouldn't, but I'm not going to stop. So uh, when we put the package in place, what we wanted to do was to make most of the money come directly from the federal government to the cities. Not that we didn't trust governors, but we didn't trust them to do what we wanted them to do. Uh, but what happened was 65% now of all of the resources come through the state, just as they do in the state of Ohio. So once that money leaves our hands in Washington, we don't have any control over it anymore. So before I meet with the mayors tomorrow, any mayors out of here and realize they didn't get any of the transportation money, call the governor, don't call me. We sent the money. We said to the governor what we thought the, the funds should be used for, but the governor and the uh, state legislature made a different decision. Uh, but there are other resources available that we think can help cities, so I want to put that out there as well. Um, what we are doing right now, especially for those of you who have businesses, is we're trying to find some way to free up credit. We've got to open credit in this country. And isn't it funny that as soon as we started telling all of the banks that received TARP money that they were going to be required, required, to modify loans, they decided they wanted to get the money back. Did you all read that? As my position is, don't take it. Make them do the loans. Because if we don't, then that means that they didn't need the money in the first place. If they can give it back now because we're saying to them, help people, then it was all a, a, a fraud and a farce in the beginning. So make them modify these loans. Because if we don't do that, you talk about the homelessness problem now, it's going to get worse. The more people we put on the street, the more packages like this are going to be needed. So let's just hope that uh, if you work for one of those banks, and I'm sure nobody in here does, but tell, <laughs> tell your bosses if they try to get the money back, I'm going to make sure the plain dealer writes that article. Uh, we also took a lot of time to deal with the housing crisis in this country. Uh, we all know that there are a lot of things that were done that should not have been done, but a lot of it was done as a result of the legislation that was passed by our Congress. We allowed certain things to happen in the industry that should never have been allowed, and probably 15 years ago would not have been allowed. So we're trying to work through some of those issues. Uh, we're also trying to work through issues of education. This particular package put more money into education than any other time in the history of this country. Because we understand that if we don't start to do something about our schools, then we're not going anyplace anyway. We are behind every other major nation in the world. But we are the wealthiest nation in the world. Anytime we can't teach our young people, we have lost the battle. And I honestly do believe that every child well taught can learn. And if we teach them, then we will have a future that I think all of us are really depending on. I mean, I have people coming to me saying, well, you know, I can't find anybody to do this work. You know, we do, do a lot of biotech and a lot of bioscience and those kinds of biomedicine in our communities. And they'll say, well, we need for you to be supportive of allowing us to bring people from other countries to do this work. And what most people don't understand is that a lot of that is nothing but high-tech manufacturing. They can't tell me that our children can't learn to do it. So my position has been, if you will tell me what it is that people need to know to do this job and will allow us to put in place a curriculum to teach young people to do this job, 
then I will support you bringing someone here. But I'm not going to support it year after year after year. Because in three years, we should have the kind of workforce that you need to do this work. And if that is your goal, is to get people to do the work, then let's start doing it right now. Because otherwise, we are never going to be the kind of country we need to be. So that is my position. If they ask you, tell them I said it. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs>